Hi, this is Mike Scroggins, your Delaware County Sheriff. I'd like to welcome you to this edition of the Delaware County Sheriff Show. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Diana Bennington. I'm judge of the Muncie City Court and I'm at Living Proof. Um, it's an event that highlights the um, effects of um, impaired driving. Um, we are in the graduation, graduation ceremony scene. Um, this is where the graduation ceremony occurs right before the students head off to the party where they um, consume alcohol, which then leads to the impaired driving um, and the crash and the death. Um, there's a lot of agencies involved in this event, um, not only those from um, the public safety sector, which would include um, Muncie City Police Department, the Delaware County Sheriff's Department, uh, but there are also folks here from um, Ivy Tech, the Ivy Tech nursing students. There's also um, members of the Delaware County Probation Office, office as well as Muncie City Court. Um, it's critical that um, the information gets out to the community to educate the community on the negative effects of impaired driving and truly what can happen and why it's important to not drink and drive. Um, also here tonight and helping with the event are all of the Delaware County Circuit Court judges. Um, I know Judge Dowling and Judge Wolf are present tonight as well. And Judge Fike. Uh, I'm Brian Blair and I'm the owner of Scaravania Haunted House and I also own Pumpkin Pulp which we uh, make Halloween and haunt type props and supplies. Um, here today to help out the living proof to do makeup on everybody for the crash scene. So uh, we're going to get a little more realistic this time and uh, hopefully drive the message home a little bit more this year. Um, this here is my makeup box so it's filled with all kinds of different things. Uh, we're going to be putting some appliances on people so this is actually just someone that's going to be dying today. Um, lacerations and things like that. So um, this is the stuff I use to make it and it should look pretty good to hopefully the time we get it all done. So. It's Brayton Conley and um, my legs hurt a little bit. <laughs> they look like they hurt. <laughs> wow. Uh -huh. Roger spilled all this on the floor. We <laughs> <laughs> need to clean it up. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, ew. I can see his legs. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> You're not going to be in the mood, though. I have a feeling it's going to get worse. Start bobby pinning like back here underneath their hair. Yeah. Let me 
to that when you get done with that stuff. That looking good even more. Uh, you glob a big glob on there so we can really get it okay. busted open. <laughs> she looks like she's enjoying it. She's going to slap it. She's going to have a big glob. <laughs> Oh, sure. A and T. A and T. A and T. Actually, if it does get in your hair, though, it pulls right out. Not your hair. Yeah, it's on me. You're gonna be like, like on the Walking Dead or something. Oh, I've never watched that. Is it good? I think it's good. You like it? Everyone usually makes it's a big deal out of it. It's average zombie movie. I'm really into The Bachelor. No, that's <laughs> completely the opposite thing. <laughs> No, I mean, you're supposed to be the kind of brat, aren't you? If, if, if it helps impact one kid's life to make a uh, good choice, then uh, it's well worth everybody's time. Do you think it's kind of... Uh, what, what do you think of the makeup? Oh, it's <laughs> fabulous. It's pretty impressive. It yeah, we went up there and checked it out. So, uh, thanks for bringing your helicopter here for a static display. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting us. I think they all Okay. We're gonna go to the party scene, which will be the first door right over here. Um, welcome to Kelsey's graduation open house. Today she's celebrating with her friends, family, and parents as she graduated um, her senior year and she's now celebrating all of her accomplishments. Her parents are very proud and excited for her. Now let's quietly go in and um, file in single file and see what's going on.
kids, there's drinks up here, there's there's food, there's pop, uh, there's alcohol up here, if you guys want some. Woo! Woo! If, Woo! Yeah. 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 don't drink too much, you guys have to get home. I don't want, I, I want you guys to be safe, but help yourselves to it. Have fun, guys. Graduation! Woo! Yeah. 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 Oh, I guess it is a special occasion. Just, just be careful. Don't bring too much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So many open houses to go to, and you're only the second one. So I think we're going to go head out. All right. Are you sure your mom's safe to drive? She's had a few drinks. She's fine. I'll be driving. So it's, I haven't had that much, so it's okay. okay. So okay. see ya. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. We will. Okay. Well, we got to go to Billy's open house. Okay. So come on, let's go. Right. Here we go. Hi. In this scene, you are about to witness a horrifying and fatal car crash. It appears that Ashley, along with her mom, are on their way to another celebration when she crosses the center line and it hits another car head on. We ask you to be very quiet and watch this as the scene unfolds. You will each be witness to the lights, sirens, actions and sounds of the various emergency responders arriving at the scene and doing their job. We hope that this is as close as each of you will ever come to a drunk driving crash, please quietly follow your tour guide's single file to view the crash scene. An emergency, Central High School, back by the football field, have a report of a head on collision. The police fire EMS. You guys can come on up here. I'll wait till you come. to groups that come through here is that CSI, Bones, and those type of shows that sensationalize death. 
and death notification really skews the American public to what really happens. In real life, death is a private and solemn manner, matter, and I want you to be able to see that. I hope to portray that in the next few minutes uh, as an example for you. Um, what we are doing, I want you to think about what you've just witnessed. You've witnessed uh, an accident. You've seen the party. You've seen the, the accident. You've seen the fact that uh, uh, police have taken into custody at least one possibly inebriated uh, driver that caused a, a death fatality on the road. I, as coroner, have identified the positive, uh, positive identification of the deceased as Sarah Green. She lives here in Muncie with her parents. I found out where she lives and we're getting ready to go make notification to them and tell them that their loved one is never coming home again. Think for a minute how you would approach that if you had to do that. Because although I love forensic science, I hate this part of the job. Follow me to the home of Sarah Green and we'll make that notification. If you would gather around right here so you can see the door. Please come in. Please come in. If you need to step on the stairway, that's fine. What I'm about to do is change someone's life forever. This knock on the door is going to be a knock that nobody ever wants to get in the middle of the night, or day for that matter. Their life will never be the same after I knock on this door. And I realize that. In fact, the only thing different about this, this uh, demonstration that isn't accurate is I usually take a uniformed police officer with me for security purposes. Basically my own. But, as I get ready to knock on this door, I am going to send whoever's on the other side in it into what's called acute distress syndrome. Fancy word. Scientific word. Psychological shock. Mental shock. What it does, it makes the, page, the person numb. It makes them detach. And they have what's called um, disassociative amnesia. That means they're not going to meet, hear or understand a word that I'm saying or remember a word that I'm saying after they know who I am and why I'm here. It will be a blank to them. A few years ago I did this type of notification and the mother crawled underneath the kitchen table, held her ears like this and rocked back and forth until her husband could get her out about a half hour later. So this truly does happen. Here we go. I don't know what's on the other side of the door, how, how, they react, how they're going to react. That's one of the reasons why I have a police officer with me. Yes. Young lady, do you have any idea what you... Oh, yes. I'm sorry, our daughter's late. Mr. Mrs. Green? Yes. Uh, are you related to Sarah Green? Yes, we are. What's the problem? Uh, my name is Jim Hyatt. I'm with the Delaware County Coroner's Office. I'm afraid I need to speak to you a few minutes. Uh, no, what, no, what? no. She's on her way home. She'll be here any minute. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm afraid thank you. There's, there's been an accident and I need to talk to you. No, about. no, no. Not, not, not our Sarah. She's, she's fine. She's with her, with her friends. I'm she's, afraid she's there's fine. Been an accident. We need no, 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 no. First funeral, as you're all aware, she was tragically killed in an alcohol-related accident, and uh, I'm sure her family will appreciate you arriving and uh, celebrating her life um, with the pastor. So, if you want to enter, please, and have a seat in the center section, and try to sit up close to the um, mourners who are already here. And the service will last three to four minutes. So, please have a seat, Dan. As you exit, come out the doors on the opposite side here. They'll be opened up. On behalf of the family, 
of Sarah, I want to thank you for coming to pay your respects today. I appreciate it with all my heart, and I know they do too. When you come to a funeral, I can tell you there's about a thousand places you'd rather be than here, but you're here. Now, when you come to me as a pastor, as a chaplain for the police department, you're going to be expecting me to say a lot of kind things. I can say that Sarah was a wonderful girl. Everybody I've talked to says she was the life of the party when she was around. Everybody says great things about her. The problem is Sarah's not around anymore. Yesterday afternoon, I buried a 74-year-old man who had been in the Marines. He had been all around the world. He had seen things. He had done things. I don't even think Sarah had been out of the state. The Bible says there's a time to live and a time to die. Forgive me if I say Sarah died too quickly, and it was unacceptable the reason why. Let me tell you something that I see a lot of the young people today doing. They use their thumbs more than anything else. When I was a kid, we used to pick our nose, and that was what we used a lot. But now you use your thumbs. Why do you use your thumbs? You're playing those games. But every time you use them to play the game, no matter what happens in that game, you could push a reset button. Or if you're on a computer, you can reboot. Or when we were children, we were playing outside. We could say, do over, do over, and we would start all over again and act like nothing had ever happened. There is no reset button. She's gone. And it should not have happened. It was because of drunk driving. Now, this puts me in a position. If she was here today, what would she say to you? She'd tell you, don't do what I did. Don't be involved in what I did. Don't be suckered into doing what I did. I want you to live. My time is over. That's a hard thing to swallow, isn't it? But it's something that all of us need to remember. We forget with our games that that is not reality. Dear ones, death is real and it is a reality. And if I may say so, as a chaplain who has dealt with all kinds of tragedies, there's no easier way to say it than this, death sucks. And there's not a thing you can do about it after it's happened. But there's sure in the world things that can do about it before it happens. A long time ago, they came up with something called, just say no. And everybody thought, well, that's a hoot. And guess what the answer to this problem is? Just say no. And she would still be alive. This is real. It's not a game. And the reality is, Death is for a long time. Life is what you make it. Live it to the fullest. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we come to you asking that everything that is seen, everything that is said and done be etched in our minds. And you would help us to remember, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And now, go with God. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Linda Ray Lou Wolf. I'm judge of Delaware Circuit Court Number Three. You have just witnessed the crash and the subsequent effects of that crash upon at least four families and all of their friends. And you've witnessed not only the crash, but the coroner's notice, notification, as well as the funeral of Sarah. Now, 
the defendant in the criminal case, Ashley Drum, the driver of the vehicle that caused the death and the serious injuries, is facing the consequences of those actions by being in court. So in this next scene, you will sh see what happens to Ashley next and what she is facing. So before you go into this room, remember it's a court of law, so turn off your cell phones and please remove your hats. So I will step in here and see if they're ready, so just a moment. <coughs> All rise, the Honorable John Fike presiding. Please be seated. We're on the record in State of Indiana versus Ashton and Nicole Drum. State of Indiana appears by Doug Mayhor, Deputy Prosecutor. Defendant appears in person by Counsel Delinda Hill. What's the purpose of today's hearing, Mr. Mayhor? Your Honor, the defendant intends to plead guilty as charged. There is no agreement as to sentencing. Ms. Drum, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Will you establish the factual basis, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Your Honor. Would you please state your full name? Ashley Nicole Drum. And how old are you? I'm 18 years of age. Ms. Drum, I want to take you back to May 5th, 2013. Did you consume any alcoholic beverages at your friend's graduation open house that was located at 1115 North Elm Street here in Muncie? How much alcohol did you consume? I'm not sure how much. I just drank a couple beers. Did you have more than one beer? Yes. Did you have more than two beers? Yes. Did you have more than six beers? Yes. Are you old enough to purchase alcohol by yourself? No. So how was it then that uh, you got alcohol at this open house? Uh, her parents furnished the alcohol and my mom went there with me. So your mother was present with you at this party? Yes. And she saw you drink this alcohol? Yes. At some point, did you then leave the open house and go somewhere else? Yes, I went to another open house. And how was it that you were getting there? I was driving. Did anything happen on your way to this other open house? Uh, there was a crash. Were you drunk at the time of this crash? Yes. And because you were drunk and driving, you caused a crash, one person was killed and another was so seriously injured that they're now permanently paralyzed, is that true? Yes. Is it your fault that someone died? Yes, it was. Your Honor, at this time I don't have any further questions to establish the factual basis. Thank you. I find a factual basis that just to accept it. I find the defendant guilty of the defendant guilty of count one operating while intoxicated, resulting in death, a class C felony, and counts two and three operating while intoxicated resulting in serious bodily injury, both Class D felonies. We now proceed to sentencing. What's the state's request in this matter? Well, Your Honor, due to the severity of this crime and Ms. Drum's negligence and criminal activity, the result of her crime and the severity of the injuries that she's caused requires the state to ask for the maximum penalty. As to the C felony, we would ask for eight years. And for each of the D felonies, we'd ask for three years each, the maximum allowed for and each one to be consecutive for a total of 14 years. Additionally, I'd like everybody to know that Mr. and Mrs. Drum will be receiving a summons from my office once we complete our investigation for aiding, inducing, and abetting an alcohol-related death with a motor vehicle. Thank you. Ms. Drum, do you have anything to say before I sentence you? I'm really, really sorry for what I did. It was an accident. I never meant to hurt anybody. I'm, I'm, student, I'm in student council and I'm on the volleyball team, the varsity volleyball team, and I earned a scholarship to go to Ball State in the fall. And I just please, Your Honor, don't send me to prison for this accident. I really did not mean to hurt anyone. Thank you, Ms. Hill. What's your request on behalf of your client? We think probation with house arrest would be appropriate, Your Honor. My client has no prior criminal record, and in that way she can pursue her future goals. Thank you. I've reviewed all the evidence as well as the many letters I've received from the victim's family and friends. Accordingly, on count one, the court sentences the defendant to eight years in the Department of Corrections. On counts two and three, I sentence the defendant to three years on each to run consecutively to count one 
for a total sentence of 14 years executed to the Department of Corrections. This is the court's judgment. All rise. Please, please, don't take her. <laughs> uh, this last scene that you're going to be seeing is the parole hearing. Uh, you kind of have to imagine that five years have passed since this court hearing you just saw, uh, and since the and since the passing of the victim. Uh, this is the parole hearing for uh, for Ashley, uh, and you'll be able to see how that goes. Okay, so we can all step inside here. Parole board hearing is now in session. Ms. Drum, from your file I've seen that you've been in prison for five years. During this time, what have you done to better yourself? I have my GED. I'm in AA meetings and I'm in council. Why do you think this parole board should grant you an early release? Because this was an accident. I was coming home from a friend's open house. My mom was with me and she knew I had a drink the night before we left. I didn't mean to hit those people. I had a few beers and took a couple of yellow pills and I don't think I was that drunk. This isn't my fault and you people have punished me long enough for a mistake and an accident. Does anyone here present today have anything else to say? I do. I was the victim's boyfriend. Five years ago, Sarah and I were enjoying our last few days of high school. We were so full of plans and ideas about what we wanted to do with our lives. We, but then, well, we wanted to do with our lives. We had, but then we both would have been accepted to college. Heck, we even had our bags half packed. We couldn't wait to be on our own. Our families are so proud of us too. In the last five years, I've graduated from college, started my career, but Sarah will never get the chance to do that. She was a good girl and she deserved better. I don't think the person who caused this accident really understands what she took from me, what she took from my family and her family in the world. Sarah deserved better. Mr. Strom, after reviewing your file and listening to you testify here today, and the testimony of the victim's ex-boyfriend, this board finds that you still are not taking responsibility for what happened that night when two people were hurt very seriously and one young girl lost her life. So your request for an early release is denied. Are you kidding me? I've paid for this long enough. I think I can go. Let's do it. Tonight, let's go. I uh, just wanted to thank everybody for coming to the uh, reenactment uh, today. Uh, it does take a lot of volunteers, and we do appreciate you coming. Um, if anybody's been touched by anything that they've seen here, there are, there are actually people you could talk to about uh, impaired driving and drunk driving. Um, we have uh, in the cafeteria, there are uh, different booths and different, uh, different organizations here. Um, there's an uh, impaired driving simulator. Uh, there's an obstacle course. There's... Uh, I believe there's something where you can actually put on these goggles. that They call them drunk goggles. Um, so there's some things that we'd like for you to take a look at in the cafeteria. Uh, also in your programs, I believe there is a green sheet that is a survey. Uh, or maybe it's not green, but uh, the box is green, I guess. Uh, if you could place those in the box on your way out past the uh, auditorium into the cafeteria. And once again, we do want to thank you for coming tonight. Try to get on the line there, Ivan. Circle the basket, turn back and back on the line, and come back this way. Still alive? No. You look like a pontoon. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Those are our toxins. That level, the county is the only one that has that level right now. We don't. The levels I have only go up to 1720. That's about a 0.25. Okay. So what's you just happen? walked at about 0.25. So what's going to happen to me? Uh, I can still drink and drive a boat. Am I correct? No. 
I no, you know, it's just, just like driving a car. Okay. If you are above 0.08 in a boat, you are above pulling on a car, it makes no difference either one, you're toast. But I'm not on but I'm not on the street though. You're on public waterway. You're, if you're public waterway at 0.08, yeah, you are a hazard to the other boaters out there. You're likely to run over somebody pulling their raft, you're likely to run over somebody. So the state enforces and the law enforces 0.08 for boaters exactly like we do for drivers. So I'll lose my driver's license. You'll lose your driver's license, exactly right. You will lose your driver's license. You're also gonna face some other sanctions from DNR you know, when it comes to their rules and regs when it comes to your boat. Right. But you are very likely to, if at that level, at the level you just walked, you're likely to have killed somebody. Okay. On a boat. Yes. Boat's the same as a car. Dispatcher. Almost 26 years. Oh. And you got your ham license too, I believe, right? Uh, yes. 
And uh, so you've been doing this here volunteering several times. Ever since we started, and I'm not sure what year that they actually started, but I've been dispatching it every year. Have emergency dispatch, emergency dispatch, have reported a bad accident, head on collision at Central High School, out by the football field, need police, ambulance, fire to the scene. Have police arriving. Fire rescue en route. Have an ambulance en route. Clear, need extra help. Fire rescue en route. Ambulance on the scene, fire rescue, you're clear, you have confirmed entrapment. Uh, reaction has been real well for the makeup, you know, I think it uh, kind of helps people take it a little more serious, um, puts them in the element, so uh, I think it's you've seen a lot of uh, sad faces, crying, <laughs> upset, so, you know, I think the, the message is starting to hit home a little bit, so that's what we wanted. Most people don't say very much, it's been very quiet out here this evening, people looking and learning. So obviously sends a good message to the public. It's something that uh, maybe every high school student ought to see before they, they venture out. So this is a good program. I think you have different reactions, like you said. I think you have people who are in total shock. Some people won't even look over there. Other people stare. Uh, you have different reactions, but like you said, I think this is an excellent program. And kids this age, before they venture out and want to try drinking and driving, I think they need to take a look at this. The parents seem to have a, a concerned look uh, on their face through most of this presentation. The children are mixed. Some, s some don't know really what to think of it. And I'm trying to reach both of them um, by including them uh, personally with eye contact, uh, with talking directly to them. Um. Tonight's been real, real good with attendance. We're on track to break last year's record. Uh, the weather has not seemed to have hampered the turnout. Uh, the helicopter wasn't able to come tonight because of the low ceiling, but everything else is running very smooth, very good, and we're pleased with the turnout, the comments that we're getting, and the feedback. It seems to be going well. We have a good crowd, and they seem to react uh, the way you want them to to this scene about this poor woman going back to jail after five years in prison and not coming out for a long time. Do you get any reaction from them, like saying, oh, she's, <laughs> we, we ought to get her? Some people uh, get mad at her because she's doing a good job of acting like a snotty young person. <laughs> <laughs> this parole board hearing is now in session. Mr. Drum, from your file, we see that you've been in prison for five years. What have you done to better yourself while, during this period? I have my GED, A meetings, and my emails. And why do you think this board should grant you an early release? Because this was an accident. I was coming home from my friend's open house. My mom was with me. She knew I had a drink before he left. I didn't mean to hit those people. I had a few beers and took a couple of yellow pills. And I don't think I was that drunk. This isn't my fault, and you people have punished me long enough for this mistake and accident. Does anyone present here today have anything to say? I do. We were on our way home from high school graduation. On our way to a friend's open house, too, just like Ashley and her mom were. We were supposed to go to graduation, have a good time, and celebrate our accomplishments with family and friends. We were driving along when Ashley here came along across the center line and hit us. Now I'm paralyzed from the waist down. The plans I have for my future are now limited, and Sarah is gone forever. 
This board has reviewed your file. We've listened to you speak tonight, and we've listened to the words of Mr. Smith. This board finds it's very clear that you still have not taken responsibility for what you did that night. Your criminal conduct seriously injured two people and caused a young girl to lose her life. Your request for early release is denied. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? Are you trying to ruin my life? I've been here for five years. I didn't do anything. This is an accident. So, uh, so far, what the feedback I've received tonight, and I'll see what you have to say about this. Most uh, the people seem to be impressed. Oh, let's have you go this way. Over this way now. They seem to be the most impressed by the crash scene. Mm -hmm. because there's so much going on in that city. And that makes sense to me because, you know, not only do we have the actual accident with the young people and the mother involved, but then we have the police officers there. They're doing what they're supposed to do, you know, with the field sobriety tests and following up on the situation. Then we have the EMTs coming in, helping those that they can assist. And so it's wonderful that so many agencies have volunteered to be involved in this event because er, just about every law enforcement agency and every uh, emergency medical service here in Delaware County has volunteered in some way to participate in that scene. So that's a wonderful thing. Judge, ask them if they thought the crash scene looked realistic. Yes. Did you, did you think it looked realistic? Mm -hmm. I think it's real close. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, we've tried to make an effort to make it more realistic. We've had more uh, assistance from a professional this year to, to make it, remember we're all amateurs at this, right? <laughs> <laughs> at putting on the event. And uh, so we do the best we can. But we did have some professional assistance in, in um, executing that scene tonight. So good. I'm glad to hear that it was received so well. That's great. I think that this is a really good program. We've worked hard to put this together for the community and we're proud of what we do and we had a very great turnout in spite of the weather and so I hope again that we'll do it next year and we'll get as maybe a bigger crowd than what we got this year and I think that we beat last year's record for how many people have gone through. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been really pleased with the turnout, uh, not just tonight, but last night. I know that last night we must have had at least 250 people um, come through the event. I'm, sh I'm sure there were more than that uh, last night. And tonight it's been very steady and uh, another very good turnout. So uh, really good feedback. Uh, people are really impressed with the crash scene. There's so much going on in that scene. And we have, there are so many people who are participating in it, participating in it that uh, it makes it very interesting for those who are observing. And uh, so I, I think it has certainly made an impact on them. So, so far so good. Very good. Your Honor. Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Prosecutor. Obviously this is a very important subject for our young people to know. Um, drinking and driving is never an accident. Is it a conscious decision every time they take a sip of alcohol and they get behind the wheel? By teaching these young people the consequences, hopefully will we prevent them from doing this. Your Honor? Well, that's a very good statement and, and it's, uh, this program has is, is always been worthwhile and uh, it's good to see the crowds that are coming out to participate in it. Um, it it's so important for kids to uh, understand the importance of thinking before they make decisions that could affect their entire life and that's what we're trying to per, uh, portray in, in the different scenes and, and uh, trying to stress the consequences if they don't make the right decisions. So um, it's, it, it's really a, a, an honor to be asked to participate in this and, and uh, everybody loves to do it. It's, it's, a lot of, it's a worthwhile program, a lot of fun. So. They do seem to like it, and a lot seem to be affected by it too, which is good. She was one of them yesterday. <laughs> her sister was the defendant yesterday, and she came through and seeing her sister in handcuffs, she got very emotional.
Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a pretty sight at all. There you go, yep. There you go. So hard. You've been driving for what, a year or two now? Um, I don't have my license. Just, you're, you're, you're at that yeah. point, you start thinking about it. Well, well this is going to mess up your mind. That's what it does. These, these glasses, the lines you see in these glasses, the up and down lines, they refracts light. But not just on the vertical plane, on the horizontal plane, it also refracts light. So it gives your brain a messed up signal and it makes you feel like you're impaired. So whether impaired be from drugs or alcohol, be from texting or driving, to start you out with these, the basic task we have for you here is I want you to take a hike. You're going to follow this line. Cool sandals, the mocks are nice, but do you watch those all day? When you walk, do you look at your moccasins? Don't look at them now. Think about walking down the hallway, you have to be looking out ahead of yourself to make sure somebody's not walking in your path. So just take a, take a hike along the dotted line here. Just a normal walk. Did that mess up? Supposed to be on the line. Do you feel like you're actually on target at all? Do you feel like you're where you're supposed to be? You know where you're at? If you can't stop where you're at, take a look. Lift your goggles up and see where you're at. Now, when you just did that, did you feel like you saw what was going on around you? Did you notice any of the other people from the next group walking by? Well, that's what happens when you let anything impair you. If you get at least a one hour sleep, if you're an athlete and you go to a late night meet and you don't get home until late and you get up early and you try to drive to school, and that is really no different than being impaired by drinking. If you're, getting, you're not on your game, this is what happens. You don't see it. You saw enough to go where the line, you stick close to the line. A drunk driver will stay close to the line. But did you see what was coming at you like that 14-year-old that just rode in front of you? You didn't see it. So that's why we do this. You don't hear it. It's not just drugs and alcohol. The phone in your hand, lack of sleep, they all do the same thing. Here with what you want to start with, place it on the line. Like I said, same thing. Every step you take, you want your heel to touch your toe. Put your hands to your side, stand up so. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed this version of the Sheriff Show. If you have any ideas, comments, or questions, please go to our website, DelawareCountySheriff.org, and we'll be glad to respond or take your ideas. Until next time, this is Mike Scroggins, your Delaware County Sheriff, wishing you all well. to thank the following underwriters for their support in producing this show. Put your business up for everyone to see. Hometown Outdoor Advertising, 765-288-9000.
Bill Gaddis Chrysler, 1717 North Wheeling Avenue, the corner of Wheeling and Centennial. Dr. Janine M. Green, Royal Family Dentistry, 1804 West Royal Drive, 289-1578. McGalliard Guns and More, 800 West McGalliard, Muncie, Indiana. 288 Guns, your one stop gun shop. Reliable Bail Bonds, corner of Washington and North Walnut Street, Muncie, Indiana. 282 4787. Northwest Towing and Recovery, Muncie location, 2900 North MLK, 288 4456. Anderson location, 1625 East 60th, 643-3333, Sam Pierce Chevrolet. The best Chevy deals are in the country, located on State Road 67 between Muncie and Dale. Parson Mortuary, 801 West Adams, Muncie, Indiana, 747-1100. Victor Giro's and Pancake House, 700 South Tilson Avenue. Great barbecue, dine-in, drive-through, or carry-out. Victor's has world-class Euros, and for your dining pleasure, you can have breakfast, lunch, or dinner at Victor's. 288-1777. Nine Guns, buy, sell, trade, 765-646-9000. 2213 South Scatterfield Road, Anderson, Indiana. Buy, sell, and trade pistols, handguns, rifles, shotguns. www.9guns.com In Anderson, Indiana.